there are two things we're missing with the Nylander situation. First of all, in the last two years, we've seen more effort from Nylander. Now, I think people sometimes have short memories, but if you go back to 2018, 19, 20, even 21, everyone agreed that the effort was not there. The skill was there, the talent was there, the effort was not there. And if you look at his point totals, he was below a point a game, and generally he got 10 fewer points than the number of games he played. Now, in the last two years, he's got a point a game, a little bit more, um, and then this past year a little bit more than that, um, jumping the goal scoring up to 40 goals, as we know. So my question is, is this because the contract is coming up? Like, Why wasn't the effort there in the four years before? I wouldn't be so easily fooled. So he's going to give an effort this coming year and he's going to get his contract and he's going to get paid no matter where he goes or if he, even if he were to stay. But I think it's foolish to keep him. And look at it long term. If we sign him for eight years, even at nine million, I wouldn't do it because the effort may drop off again. That's a risk, right? I mean, I'm not saying it's going to, but I would say there's a good chance that it will. And we need to tie this in with something else. Now, it's interesting that we got Bertuzzi because Bertuzzi puts in such an effort. He plays a full game, let's call it. Right? We all know. He can scrap, he can dig for pucks, he puts in a full effort, he plays a 200-foot game, and he gets like 20-plus goals, right? So do we want the Bertuzzi kind of guy who plays the full game, or do we want 10 more goals, or 15 more goals, but not a full game? For me, I think there is a, a weakness on the team when you have too many players who are just highly skilled. Now, the other part that's difficult with this is Nylander's going to negotiate for a no-trade clause. So what does that mean? The likelihood that the effort's going to be there is even lower. He's got a no-trade clause, he's got a Mercedes-Benz, He's got his $10 million, and he drops from 40 to 30 goals, drops back down to less than a point a game, and the effort 200 feet of the ice, and the effort to dig for pucks and the grit, and it's, it's not there. So what are you paying for? I think in a salary cap era, you need value for money, and you need to consider the whole team and the whole player. And with Tavares, Matthews, Marner, and Nylander, and Riley, and uh, Klingberg, all being skilled players who don't play. I mean, it depends who you're talking about. If you're talking about Marner, yeah, he comes back and plays D. That's great. But he's not big. He's not a leader. He crumbles in the playoffs. He kind of, he's kind of weak and crying, and, oh, Montreal beat us. And, you know, it, it's like, oof, it's annoying. Uh, Matthews has gotten better, but I think the problem is the bite is not in the dog. And I think you'll see that with Bertuzzi and Domi, that the bite is in the dog. And if like old timers like me go back to 2003, 1993, we remember what bite in the dog looks like. We don't have to go there. But these six players now don't have it. Without getting into Ryan Reeves, I mean, he is what he is. He's good. He brings a bite, whatever. But that doesn't solve the other six players who don't have it. So I think in that context, it's a mistake to give this guy eight years at even 8.5 or 9. There's too many of this kind of player on the team. I think a lot of us see it. Um, we'll get into the playoffs. This is my second point. But I would say that MLSE want money. They're a sports entertainment business. And if Nylander sells tickets and makes people feel excited because they like him, they'll keep playing, running it back. And this has been going on since the 80s. People have said, stop going to the games. Stop putting your money into merchandise. 
that goes straight into the pockets of this organization that runs all these teams. And no one does it. People still go, oh, we got Bertuzzi, we got Domi, oh, it's so exciting. I like them, two cool players, but we need a team full of them. And when we, ha when we have a team full of them, and a team full of guys, you, get, you know, if you go back in the day, we had McGilney in 2003, four. We had Boroshevsky in 2000 and, uh, sorry, 1993. That's fine. You can have a couple of them. You know, Sandin, he, he was, became a good leader. That's okay, you know. But isn't it better to have the Gilmores of the world, the Ch Kachucks of the world, the Bennets of the world, the Bertuzzi's, the Domi's, who play a full game? And I think a winning team like we've seen with Vegas, and we saw with Tampa, with guys like Kalorn and Palat, Paul, uh, Perry, um, everyone chipping in. You have a solid goalie, a solid D. You have a couple of uh, third and fourth lines that um, chip in, can score, but you know, 10, 15 goals a year. And then you have your top, and you have you know your one or two guys who, who are skilled. We have too many. Do you, do you see what I mean? So the argument that like, oh, let's sign Elander isn't that exciting is like, it's, it's, it's silly for me. I think he's got to go. And I think he's got to go for a top defender. And Dubas was silly enough to sign Riley to uh, a no-move clause. So, you know, six more years of that. How do you repair that? It's, it's so difficult. So, you know, I mean, one way is getting a top left-handed defenseman who can play the power play, has a shot, commands a game, can defend. An all-around game, plays a full game for Nylander. You know, and then you slot in Bertuzzi on the right, on the second line, uh, Nyes on the top, Domi on the top, first, second line, those two. You know, maybe Yarncroc sometimes, but there's another guy we got to get rid of. Do you see what I'm saying? Like, this, this is why, like, looking at Nylander and going, ooh, 40 goals, sign him. It's like, it's silly. So the, the other thing I'll say is, in the playoffs, you'll see the same numbers and the same pattern. So the last two years, he was a point a game, and uh, before that, he was oh, so before that he was well below a point a game, and his overall stats are still below a point a game. So he's got something like 50 games played and 40 points in the playoffs overall. But it's only in the last two years that you've seen that rise in effort. And I wouldn't be fooled. I wouldn't be fooled and I wouldn't take the risk. Not when there's too many players on this team that fool us, that show up and you know they're skilled and playing shinny in the regular season and then disappear. And they disappear 10 to 15 games in the regular season and they disappear against Florida and they disappear against two to three games against Tampa. And it's like, why are we signing Nylander? For what? You know? You could argue, well, he was the best out of the four of the core four in the playoffs. But is it going to be after you sign him? And we again, we have too many skilled guys, just purely skilled guys. So I think we're missing a trick with Nylander. I think it'd be a shame if we signed him. I think we're over the cap anyway, so we probably won't. But man, we need some defense. I mean, build the damn team from the back out or get a top goalie. You know, uh, package Murray and Nylander and Yarncroc or whatever, Robertson, whatever you have to do. I mean, Robertson, yeah, small, skilled forward. But still, I don't like giving away young guys with potential. I think you just keep them in the system and you bring them slowly, give them time, get them to adjust to the game, and you end up with like a Steve Sullivan, you know. Um, so yeah, that's my rant on Nylander for me. Get rid.